A thread by Comrade Fudge. Info underscore bomber tweets about the autonomous zone in Seattle. I know how they can get those supplies, but they will have to practice evil capitalism. Why hasn't the local government shut off the power, water, wastewater services, so they have to add those to the list and watch the chaos of communism ensue? Comrade Fudge responds, I'll tell you why. The local government is encouraging, even helping them. Every Democrat up to the state level is doing everything they can to help them. Note, I'm not talking about the police. The police chief herself is admitting they are hamstrung to respond. Remember the ICE protests in Seattle? That was a dry run for the Antifa goons. The mayor blocked the police from responding, and the Antifa goons set up literal urban fortress to besiege ICE. That's right, Antifa stand? <laughs> this is a rerun. An interesting note about the Democrats and Antifa's play right now. They want to provoke a federal response. The first siege of the ICE location in Seattle was an experiment in how far they could go, how long they could keep it up for. Ignore the demands. They're irrelevant. Disbanding the police and such, the ones who are allowing this, the city council and mayor and governor, they don't give a fuck about those demands. Antifa didn't run the ICE siege as an experiment. The Democrats letting it run, that's the experiment. So. Look at the videos coming out of Antifa stand. Look at the pictures of that idiotic garden. Stix Hexenhammer did an excellent video of the pants on head imbecility that was their garden. Do you honestly think those people have a clue what they're doing? That they're capable of detailed long-term planning? Their security is being run by a fucking quote-unquote war general. Seriously, that was the title that some local rapper who took over claimed for himself. No, what the Democrats want what the people who put these potato-brained imbeciles up to this want is to drag this out, cover up the damage being done via the mainstream media's whitewashing it, and then either provoke a federal response guaranteeing shootouts or make Trump look weak. In a shootout, they can paint Trump as an authoritarian. If he doesn't respond, they want Cerno Bitch and Shapiro and Tucker and Hannity and other spineless fuck stains to paint him as weak, to make his base leave him. That's their play. Unfortunately for them, Trump is Batman. Their plans revolve around two explicitly false facts. First, that Trump is an authoritarian. He's not. And so he won't respond the way they want him to. Second, that he has no agency, that they have forced him into a lose-lose situation. Again, this is false. Trump spent three years carving out of a hostile executive branch filled with a federal bureaucracy that didn't want him to be able to operate, much less breathe, his own shadow executive branch. That's right. The, the organized for action saboteurs and devotees aren't the shadow government. <laughs> They're the entirety of it. Obama and the Democrats have refused to hand over power have violated the peaceful transfer of power and shot the last vestige of democracy in the face. Trump's executive branch is the real shadow government, operating outside the scope of hostile federal agencies bent on destroying him, of creating more impeachment trials. He was so effective at this, fucking Vindman was the best the Obama acolytes could throw at him. But he couldn't do this because they thought he was a giant orange buffoon. He couldn't do this because they thought he was an authoritarian who would simply issue orders that their federal loyalists would refuse, causing another impeachment crisis. I expect a Kobayashi Maru play coming out soon. I don't know what form it will take because it is the nature of a true Kobayashi Maru, a solution to an unwinnable problem that falls outside the parameters seemingly established by said problem, to be unpredictable. I'd like to present to you a story from way back, eight years ago. It's a story none of you will have ever heard before because I don't share this story often. I take you back to EVE Online, a game that is best described as a social and economic experiment disguised as a spaceship game which turned into an asylum for lunatics, sociopaths, and Australians.
I was one such lunatic. In EVE, the galaxy is divided up into solar systems, each solar system having two things in common, jump gates that led to neighboring solar systems, and security statuses which determined what you could do in the system without space police shooting at you. I was in a group known as Avarice, which had formerly been a part of a larger group known as Mostly Harmless, all of us living in Nullsec, a.k.a. no holds barred, anything goes, there is no space police. Mostly Harmless and Avarice had, at this time, parted ways via gunfire. Yes, PvP, player versus player, was a common thing in Nullsec. Avarice was exceedingly good at it, having pioneered what I would say is the closest thing a spaceship game has to a hoplite phalanx, a short-range remote rep battleship fleet, i.e., we would get into one tightly packed group of the heaviest sub-capital ships we could, repair each other, and fight at ranges so close we could smell our opponent's ball sweat through the monitors. It would strike the enemy fleets like a cannonball and shatter them. Of course, Mostly Harmless was jealous of our elite skills and camaraderie, and the subgroups mostly within Mostly Harmless got pissed when their players wanted to hang out with us more than their own subgroups. So we parted ways and started shooting each other. A lot. One such encounter, we went to a gate in the territory of Mostly Harmless that they liked to a camp, i.e. siege, because it led to High Sec, a soft place full of cowards that grew fat under the protection of the space police, and then would foolishly jump into Null Sec to die. We, of course, slammed our tightly packed formation of battleships into them, shattered them, and then the idiots of Mostly Harmless decided to throw capital ships at us, thinking that they could chase us off the gate. They were incorrect in this assessment, and we killed three of them. I'll preempt the picks or it didn't happen with the actual battle report, aka a listing of ships involved and killed in the fight. I swear to you, this story and what follows is completely real. Also, I'm apparently bad at math. It was 11 years ago. My bad. Fuck. I'm old. Anyway. Also, to note, they actually outnumbered us, but many of their pilots fled and weren't listed in the report because they weren't involved in any of the few kills they got on our auxiliaries in the group Maru Cage. Membership-wise, Mostly Harmless had thousands. We had a hundred-ish. After the fight, our friends, still in Mostly Harmless, told us two things of note. First, their high command was furious about the loss and were busy arguing in a private chat channel. Secondly, that there was a Titan, an expensive-ass ship worth thousands of U.S. dollars, vulnerable. A plan came together quickly. We would have to quickly traverse 20 solar systems of hostile territory in short order, a trip that would take 40 or so minutes. If we moved fast, we could reach the Titan, destroy it, and smear our enemy's reputation further. We hauled ass. We sent our auxiliaries up ahead to shoot any obstacles they had in place to slow down deep-ranging fleets like ours, and the rest of us barreled along behind them, turning a 40-minute trip into a 30-minute trip. We still weren't fast enough. The Titan, being vulnerable, was because some key person was specifically not fueled, has specifically not fueled the orbiting space station it was being built at, leaving it defenseless. Their scouts saw our fleet moving, and they proceeded to send someone to refuel the station. It got worse. We were deep into a dead end due to how the jump gates for the solar systems in the area were organized, a calculated risk we took to get at the target, and they had organized a fleet to block us in e even larger than the first fleet we beat. Our auxiliaries panicked. Their leader took them on a run to try to break through the enemy fleet and get away with as many as they could, and were slaughtered, leaving just the battleships and a few others who had stayed. We were trapped, outnumbered, and about to be killed. And so we pulled a Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> you didn't think I wouldn't loop this story back to that point, did you? The namesake of the Kobayashi Maru comes from Star Trek. In their academy, there was a simulation scenario called the Kobayashi Maru that was by design unbeatable. 
The intended purpose was to put their officer trainees into an extremely high-stress scenario in order to teach them how to maintain their composure under duress. Captain Kirk went in ahead of time and changed the programming of the scenario in order to beat it, i.e. he cheated. We cheated too. Eve is a game for lunatics, sociopaths, and Australians, after all. And in Avarice, we fit the bill for lunatics and sociopaths. It was one of the core requirements to join, in fact. We did not tell the auxiliaries that there was a backup plan if we couldn't kill the Titan, and allowed them to panic on their own and flee into the enemy fleet. This made the enemy stop just outside the system we were at, thinking it was a matter of time until we came. Furthermore, it was not stated that some of the many friends in Mostly Harmless we had made were a few of the people responsible for fueling their space stations, including the ones who had been called up to refuel the Titan building station. Now, we weren't so lucky as to be friends with both of the guys who refueled the stations, and the one we weren't friends with had been the one to refuel the Titan station. However, we were friends with the one who knew the password to one of the stations that had what was essentially a player-owned jump gate, an add-on to orbiting stations that allowed anyone who knew the password to jump to another system, circumventing the normal jump gates. The refueling players had used these player jump gates to get into the system around us, and one of them was going to leave the door open, essentially. Icing on the cake, the enemies had a volunteer to be their scout to come into the system and see where exactly we were at. He, too, was a friend of ours, a new player that we had been teaching how to fight properly and was on the verge of joining us when we broke away from Mostly Harmless. So, he came into system and as we left through the back door, kept reporting, oh yeah, they're still in there. This jump gate dropped us further away from our home solar system, unfortunately. But most importantly, it was empty and next to one of the outer borders of the Mostly Harmless Territory. So, we kept the enemy fleet besieging an empty system for three hours as we flew home. So, yeah, it looks like Seattle is a lose-lose situation. The Dems want everyone to think it's a lose-lose situation. Cernovich and Shapiro and who knows how many other fuckwads will help them make you think it's a lose-lose situation. But when they do, remember, there's a piss-drunk Australian that's on their side, sitting in an empty solar system for three hours straight, watching YouTube and drinking Fosters, occasionally saying into his mic, Yep, still see them all. They're gonna jump through it any minute. Just sit tight. <laughs>